So today I'm gonna show you some of my tips and tricks for Ableton Live. My first tip is to simply make a default template. And what you do is that you open Ableton Live and then you simply just make it as you want it. So in my preset I have a hall, a tape delay, which is kind of long. I'm kind of a fan of two analogs. And then I have a slapback delay, kind of, with reverse left and right. And then at least I have a small room, which I think is so important to have. Another neat trick I like to have is to bind my two analog controls. So I simply bind feedback for one fader and my time. So if you don't own a old tape delay, then you can simply have one right at your hands because I think the most amazing thing about having a real tape delay is that you have to use the knobs. And by simply assigning these knobs in your template, Every time you open up, they will be assigned. When you have made the template that you think is really good, then you go to your preferences and then you go to file folder and simply press save current set as default. And uh, in the future, this will be the thing that opens up when you open a fresh project in Ableton Live. Often when I compose, I love to use multiple sounds playing the same thing. You can do this in multiple ways. You can use all the different instrument in a instrument rack. But another neat trick that I like very much is to simply assign the helm to have an input from my labs, which is currently playing. So now when I play, it's playing exactly the same as the labs piano is playing. Sometimes the octave doesn't match and what I do is I use the MIDI effect pitch and I simply take it down one octave. I think this sounds better now. I really love the MIDI insert because it enables me to work very fast without using the mouse. So I use a lot of keyboard strokes and uh, I will show you some of those I use the most. Basically, I start with putting one note and then I use shift arrow left and right to make them longer or shorter. So this is my starting point. Then I press control C, control V to copy paste it. And now I made the fifth. And again, if I want to take it an octave up, in general, everything that has to do with octaves, you just simply just press shift. So I press shift and arrow up. And then uh, now I simply made a major chord without using the mouse. And then again, if I was making a chord progression, a button I really like is duplicate loop because now I already have the next chord and I can simply just use my arrows up and down to listen to how it sounds. And then again, if I'm satisfied, duplicate loop. And then when it comes to making melodies, I'm simply pressing Command, Control D, duplicating it. And using the arrows. And then another very neat button is the legato button, which makes all the notes legato. And also sometimes I figure out that I made it in double time or half time and then simply I just grab nothing and I use the double or half time. Another thing that I really like is when I'm making piano pieces is to use the sustain pedal and I do that by activating the envelopes and I go to MIDI and select hold pedal. 
and then I tilt it to hold it and it just sounds so good with a lot of different instruments. Can you hear? It just sounds like a real piano now because the sustain pedal is in use. So this is another great way to make your notes longer. Insert and cut time. Let's say that you figured out that the first form you made didn't really fit and you want to have this inserted. What you can do is basically command C and then press where it should be and press command shift V which inserts empty space and copy pastes it in where it should be. If you just want blank space you can press Control E and choose how many bars of space you want to have. So 8 and what if you have a break and you want to delete it? You simply choose what you want to delete and press Control shift x One of my most beloved features in Ableton is the Control f which lets me find all the plugins I use in 5 seconds. For example, if I want my favorite reverb, ballad reverb, bow, I have the preset right here. Or if I want the 808 kit, simply just drag and drop. But for example, if you use contact or if you, for example, have a favorite helm preset and you really want to be able to find that extremely fast, let's say that I use this preset for almost every song I ever write. So what I do is I group the helm by pressing Control G and then I simply name the preset something that I remember. For example, my synth. So the next time I want to use this synth sound, then I simply press Control F and search for my synth. And then it pops up here and I simply just drag it to a channel. One thing that really taught me a lot was the Ableton Groove. So let's try to use it. And I always just use it by pressing the swap. But then the Groove window shows and uh, by simply double click or dragging them. I got a whole nother feel of what I was doing and I think it's so incredible, inspiring. Of course, you can also do the normal swing thing. But being able to try out different grooves that I wouldn't think of myself is just so inspiring for me. So try it out if you haven't tried it. I really like the random clip color. I can't explain why, but I love to have it at random. Another thing that's really important for me, because back in the days when I was starting using Ableton Live, when I was importing files, I would never really understand why it didn't match, but it was because it was out warping. And since I'm using a lot of multi-track files, I really don't want it to warp all the files by automatic. Because if you warp different files, then the phase will shift and if you're really unlucky, the hits will not come at the same beat. And for me, it just simply made me go and say, auto warp long samples off. When you're recording MIDI or audio, sometimes there's like a lot of latency and uh, Ableton has this function called reduced latency when monitoring. When you're using plugins that introduce latency, the only way of really bypassing this latency is to actually delete the plugin. So in general, when you're making the music, playing the instruments and figuring out how the song should be, try to avoid having heavy plugins on the mastering bus because that will just introduce latency to all of your tracks. If you like this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and consider to subscribe to my channel. It would truly make me happy. Enjoy.